everyone, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be showing you just a simple get ready with me and I'm just going to go ahead and put some makeup on my face today and I'm going to show you some tips and tricks along the way of things that I do to make my face look kind of the way I want it to. Um, if you see some puppies in my videos today, I currently have three dogs pretty much sitting in my lap. So my channel very much welcomes all of our furry friends. So if you see some puppies in the background, well, just enjoy. <laughs> but before we go any further, if you would like to become a member of the Glowing Gluten Free group, please go ahead and subscribe. And also, if you like this video, please hit the like button. And while you're chatting with me, please leave any of your answers or replies down in the comment section. And if you think of any topics that you would like to talk about for the next Get Ready With Me, um, just leave them in the comments down below. So let's just go ahead and get started. So first things first, I am just going to pin my hair back a little bit here. Get it out of the way. I like to make sure my hair stays out of the way when I'm applying my face makeup, my complexion. So tell me how you all are doing. I know things have been kind of crazy with the whole coronavirus and um, sheltering in place. For any of you all who don't currently live in the same state as me, which is Alabama, um, leave in the comments how you all are doing, what the kind of protocol is there as far as face masks go, and if things are starting to get a little bit more normal in the area where you live. So I'm gonna start off with complexion today. First tip is always to make sure you have clean hands when you're getting started. And this is one of man-made's best inventions ever. This is the Body and Face Norwex towel. It's fantastic, I just have it damp. It's antibacterial, which is great. I always have one of these with me whenever I'm doing any kind of shopping or going out right now, because it's a way that I can sanitize my hands without using hand sanitizer, which will frequently have vitamin E in it, which can be gluten. So these are fantastic. They're nice and soft. If you use them to take off your makeup, they can lightly exfoliate your skin. The more damp you have it, the less exfoliating it is, or the, the more you wring it out, the more exfoliating it is. So the first thing I'm gonna take is my CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation. This is in the color L60. It's a tiny bit dark for me, but it's not terrible. So what I'm gonna do is take about one pump of this onto my fingers and squeeze about the same amount of my favorite lotion, which is the CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion, onto my hands. And I'm gonna rub those two together. I really like using my hands to apply my foundation. I've just found that I can get more coverage precisely where I need it. I also am wasting less product because I'm not putting it on a sponge or a brush. And so I find that I can get a little bit more coverage where I want it. Make sure you blend down the neck. Sorry, my little guy has decided to go ahead and nest <laughs> in his little bed as I'm applying my makeup here. So if you hear that scratching sound, that's what that is. Kobe making a little happy spot so he can take a nap. Okay. And then what I do after that, after that's all evenly spread out, I take about another half a pump into my fingers and then I just apply it where I feel like I need a little bit more coverage, which is usually in this general area. And when I'm doing this, I usually try to press in the product. Just gives you a little bit more coverage and keeps all the color a little bit more precise on where you're putting it. I'm not totally in love with this foundation, but I have found that when I use it with a moisturizer or a lotion, it settles onto my skin better because before it was settling into the lines on my face. Um, I have the classic 11s right here on my face and it would just kind of settle into those lines and I just didn't like that and it looked a little bit dry. And so instead 
I tried putting a moisturizer with it and that did help the overall look of the foundation and it just makes it go on a little smoother too. So next I'm going to go in with my Studio Pro Total Coverage Concealer from BH Cosmetics. This is a great full coverage concealer and this guy is certified gluten free and it's a clean brand and this guy is only six dollars so it's a great brand um, it's a great cruelty free product as well I really try to focus the majority of my skincare my hair care and my makeup all on cruelty free products and so I'm just gonna take this right underneath my eyes So as I'm doing this, tell me what kind of music you all have been listening to. Because I noticed that since we're quarantining and sheltering in place, I have been listening to a little bit more music lately just to kind of keep my mind <laughs> preoccupied. Um, personally, I love tons of different artists, but generally I like the pop and the Christian artists. and but I like a little bit of everything. I like a little bit of R&B. I like a little bit of country. Not a whole lot of country, but just a little bit. And, but mainly pop. So people like Camila Cabello, Ariana Grande, uh, Maroon 5. I like a little bit of Chris Brown. I like, what is this? let's see, who else? Put your favorites in the comments below, but I know I'm missing tons. Charlie Puth is another one of my favorites. I also like some of Katy Perry's music, but mainly her her older music, like her Teenage Dream album, and um, what were some of the other ones? Prism I liked, and I do like her new album Smile. Um, I don't love all of the songs, but I do like I do like a couple of her newer things. Also, the country that I do like is a little bit of Florida Georgia Line. But other than that, I'm not a huge country fan. Even though, whoop! <laughs> if you all didn't see that, I just shot the cap of my concealer way across the room. Um, and as you can see, I'm taking the concealer all over my lower lid, kind of the lower eye area. I'm also putting it on my eyelid all the way up to my bra bone. Um, and especially in this inner corner here because I get a lot of kind of the blue purple darkness in that area and so I like to really make sure my concealer is full coverage. I do like to put a lot of concealer on because there's almost nothing to me that breaks a makeup look as much as a dark circle popping through. I like a nice bright fresh face. Oh Jonas Brothers. Jonas Brothers are great. I love their new music. I'll keep spitting them out as I'm putting makeup on. I'll come up with more because I love I love just a mixture of almost anything. So at this point is when I would usually conceal any spots that I want to kind of disappear. Okay. So now I'm just going to use a little bit of pressed powder to go underneath my eyes and on my eyelids. So I like to kind of press at first. underneath the eye so I'm not moving any of that product or the concealer that I just put down. Just kind of making little stamping motions and then I'll go all over the lid up into the brow and this outer corner and the inner corner of my eye. And so as everyone has been sheltering in place and spending more time at home, of course, I assume if you all have pets, you all have been spending more time with them as well. My two guys are actually <laughs> kind of loving everyone being home a little bit more and spending more time. I work from home and so it's, they're used to me being home now and if I ever had to work outside the home, again, I just don't even know what they would do with themselves. They're used to my husband going to work, but they don't even like that. And so I have two pups, Mocha and Kobe. If you've been on my channel, 
for more than 10 minutes. You, I'm sure you've heard me talk about them. They are my babies. I love them to death. And they are at least half brothers. And they're both Morkies. So I'm going to go in next with my KKW Beauty Contour Stick. And I'm going to start with the Light 2 shade and start to contour my cheeks. So like I said, they're half brothers at least. Um, we got them from the same family. Um, so Mocha is four and Kobe is three. And Mocha was not a big fan of Kobe when we first got him. And I just switched over to the light one shade. And so he was not a big fan of his little brother because he was used to being the only child, but they really grew to love each other. And now they give each other good morning kisses and they're just, they're just best buds. They're curled up together on the little bed that we bought them over there while well, as we speak. So first I'm going to take my Scott Barnes foundation brush and I'm going to go in and blend the forehead area and I kind of use that light one shade as a bronzer, as a cream bronzer and it works really well with my skin tone just to kind of warm up my complexion a bit and blend out my nose just by kind of pressing and going up like this on each side of the nose. I also have my buddy Scout laying next to me here. He is a rescue from the from the local animal shelter here in Huntsville. And he is one of my parents' big guys. And he is a Great Pyrenees Black Lab mix. And he's just, he's huge. <laughs> he's a big, sweet guy. And his dad is out of town. And his mom is out running errands. So he's buddying up next to me for this video. So I'm just pressing that cream product into my skin and really kind of getting it precisely where I want it. And then I'm going to go in with my Scott Barnes foundation brush and blend out any of those harsh lines. I'm going to put a little bit more on. Mm, maybe not. I only have that much left. <sighs> have you noticed this too, where you live, where products are taking longer and longer to get a hold of them because of the coronavirus and so I'm literally just going to put that much contour on because I have that much left and it's not back in stock on KKW Beauty and I don't want to buy a pack and this is the other side so needless to say that's all the contour I'm going to do today so I'm just going to blend it and then I'm going to go back in if I need just a tiny bit more with excess from my Real Techniques Expert Face Brush. And just stamp it in. Oh, back with the Scott Barnes brush and blend along the jawline. And every one of these products obviously is gluten free. If they're not specifically stated as gluten-free products, I've read through the label and I do not see any gluten present on the label. And if there was gluten in the product, I would be very, very ill. So I feel safe recommending these products to you guys. So next I'm gonna go in with brows. This is probably one of the things that takes me the very longest <laughs> to put on my face. So I am going to take my Sonia Kashuk brush which is a spoolie on one end here and an angled brush on the other. I'm just wiping it up with my Norwex towel, making sure not to get the brush hairs wet because that will make the powder that I'm about to use darker and we don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and brush up my brow hairs first with my spoolie. And I'm going to go into my Naked 2 palette. Now, they do not sell this palette anymore um, because Urban Decay does not make it. But any of the colors that I'm going to use today, you can purchase on either Ulta, Sephora, 
or um, UrbanDecay.com. So they still make the colors that I'm using today, but they do not make this palette, which is sad because I love this palette. I used it on my wedding day and I have used it for so, so many things. So I am taking the color Busted, which is kind of a deep brown shade. And I'm going in and just barely tapping my brush into the pigment and then filling in my brow with that powder. And something that I have learned as I have kind of had to relearn doing my makeup um, again just recently is that you can use a powder for anything. It doesn't have to be specifically what the powder is supposed to be used for. Like eyeshadow, you can use this color. It's right next to the black one. See, there's busted right there. You can use it for whatever you want. An eyeshadow only used for your eyes. It doesn't have to be a bronzer that you only use to bronze your skin. You can use blush for eyeshadow. You can literally do whatever you want. You're your own artist. You can do whatever you want, whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you feel good and happy and good about yourself. Just use it, why not? It's just a powder, just use it. And so that being said, I am just drawing on my brows and I'd like to turn the brush upward to get this straight front. Always using light motions. And if you draw outside the line like I just did there, don't panic, just brush it away. And that is part of the reason why I put powder all the way up to my brow is because I knew I was going to be applying my powder brow product. And so that makes everything just glide on a little bit easier and it doesn't make any kind of patchiness as you're applying the product. I'm just gonna drag out this end a little bit. And eyebrows, you want them to be, you know, close relatives, sisters, but they're never gonna be perfect twins. So just make them look the way that you like and try to make them look, you know, at least similar. Okay, so my brows are on. And the next step that I'm going to do is something that I have come up with on my own. It's just a little hack from home. I see all of these YouTubers using brow products like brow gel, and that's not something I had ever personally used, but I really wanted to try it, especially since I use a brow powder or an eyeshadow, I wanted to set it in place. So what I'm doing right now is I am taking my hair gel, which is a clear medium hold styling gel, which is also gluten free. This is the Brave Free brand. And I'm going to use it as a brow product. So I just put the tiniest amount on the back of my hand. And what I'm going to do is take my finger and just kind of rub it around so there's not this big glop on my hand. And then I'm going to take my spoolie and just kind of press it into the product. And you don't want a lot, you just want a little bit. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm trying to get close so you all can see, is brush up the brows. Cause I like a little bit more of a full fluffy brow lately. So you kind of brush it up and then I kind of go at an angle to kind of get those hairs to lay down a little bit. So I don't look surprised all the time. <laughs> and then that just kind of sets the brow in place. And then same thing for the other side, dip your spoolie in and go in and brush up those brow hairs. And then go in and just kind of calm them down a little. So it gives your eyebrow the illusion of more fullness than what you have or what I have, which is not much to my brows. I just mainly have length I brought to my brow hairs and so this helps them to kind of stand up a little bit to make my brows look a little bit more full and a little bit more voluminous than they really are and I'm just going to take that edge there and just kind of lay them down and you can really make your brows into any shape that you want but this will keep your brows in place 
and you're going to save a lot of money on brow gel because even just a little bitty brow gel can be like ten dollars and this thing was not expensive and between using this in my hair and using it for a brow gel this is eight ounces of product it's also gluten free it's also cruelty free this is going to take me forever to go through and think of how much money i'm saving not buying brow gel and just using my clear unscented fragrance free gluten free brow or hair gel it's great and what are your brows anyway hair it's used to put your hair hold your hair in place why would it not hold your brows in, in place right okay so next is one of my very favorite steps which is highlighter love my scott barnes highlighter so i'm gonna go into twilight sand and just hit the tops of my cheekbones i love 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 this product scott barnes is a certified gluten-free and cruelty-free brand careful not to hit your brows sometimes I actually do my highlighter before I do my brows so that I can set them and I don't hit my brows when I'm putting on highlighter but I forgot to do that today with the cupid's bow and I don't think too much highlighter is ever a thing so I'm going into pink fresh right now and I'm just going on the very high points of my cheekbones and just popping a little bit more on there. And sometimes I'll even go into the color Easy Glowing and just bronze up my chest a little bit because I am a very, very pasty woman. Okay. So, yeah, that was a little too much, but who cares? I'm not like I'm going anywhere today. So this is a great trick that I've learned is to not tweeze your brows until they are all painted on the way that you want them to be. I have learned that that is a way for you to keep your brows in good shape and keep them the shape that you want because I can't tell you how many times I've over plucked my brows because I thought that I was staying in the line of the shape that I wanted, but I wasn't. And so a great tip that I've learned is to just wait to do your brows, to pluck your brows, until you have them drawn on the way that you want, so you're not taking off more brow than you want. So I've just currently, just recently joined Reddit, and I have been loving the AWE subreddit. It is so cute, which is, if you all don't know about it, it's just the cutest videos of animals, kids, anything that's just super adorable that makes you go aw <laughs> it's just those kind of videos and they're super cute but i'm brand new so if there are any subreddits that you all love leave that down in the comments because my hubby knows all about reddit his brothers use it but i don't really know much about it other than what he's told me i don't know how to navigate it super well I'll learn. So tell me some of the things that you all have been doing to keep busy during quarantine. For me, I know that I would be loving to do some more baking and cooking, but that's not something that my health allows me to do right now. But some of my favorite foods are pancakes. I am a pancake lover. I love cinnamon rolls, which my husband has learned how to make a gluten-free cinnamon roll that is really good. So I'm gonna start on my lashes here. I'm just gonna curl. So one thing I do is I go right at the base first, give a little pulsing squeeze, and then go on the outside edge, do the same little pulse, and then make sure you get that inside edge as well. And so you get a nice curl. And then I go middle again, and then I curl up the lash line. So that I don't just get this crimp right at the base. I also scoot up the lash line so I get more of a curve rather than a kink into my lashes. So anyway, my husband learned how to make these gluten-free cinnamon rolls, which were delicious, but we haven't made them in years. He's also learned how to make some delicious gluten-free brownies and pumpkin pie and all kinds of things that I hopefully will be able to eat again soon. But I honestly
honestly don't know when that will happen with my health right now, uh, meaning I'm still only eating three different things, but I hope that it will be something that we can resume because I loved to make uh, pumpkin muffins and pumpkin bread and lemon bread and I used to make this apple fritter bread which was delicious if you can't tell I am a big fan of sweets <laughs> I love 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 Milo's iced tea I love the Snapple peach tea which is delicious oh and I'm going in this is my Maybelline Colossal um, waterproof mascara now this is one of the only only things in my collection that is not cruelty free which I hate <laughs> because this mascara is awesome nothing else holds my lashes up like this I have tried so many different kinds of mascaras all cruelty free I've tried the um, two some of the Too Faced mascaras I've tried Tarte mascaras I've tried um, ones from Thrive Cosmetics. I have tried uh, the Honest mascara and nothing else compares to this Maybelline mascara. And I just, I don't, I'm trying to find another mascara to take its place. And I will let you all know when I do for sure. But for right now, I just can't find anything that beats the volume that I get from this and my eyelashes will go so straight right after I curl them if a mascara does not hold my curl in place and this mascara does it and it holds the curl all day long don't panic if you do that like I just did just wait for that mascara to dry and then you can get it off your face without getting a big black streak but anyway, this mascara is great. It's drugstore pricing, so it's not super pricey. And I just love it. It gives me really good length and volume, but I just wish it was cruelty free. So some of my favorite gluten-free dinners, since I talked about some of my favorite gluten-free kind of desserts or breakfast foods. Desserts, I guess, would be just chocolate cake and the Daya brand ice creams, Daya, Daya, however you want to pronounce it. The Daya brand makes great ice cream bars and they're delicious. And so some of my favorite gluten-free dinners, I would say, oh, desserts, more desserts any kind of like cobbler, peach cobbler, berry cobbler. I made this one one time that was strawberries, peaches, and blueberries. I was like, I like all three of those, but I'm not sure if it's gonna like turn out, if it's gonna actually like taste good. It was so good. I could have eaten that whole pan by myself. I didn't, but I was probably pretty close. <laughs> so my favorite dinners are honestly probably uh, chicken and waffles. I would say breakfast for dinner. <laughs> I love to make just a steak and I make french fries in the oven and roasted vegetables to go with. I love, um, let's see what else, tacos, of course. And let's see what else. I love sandwiches too. I really love just a basic sandwich. Yeah, so I briefly talked about my puppies, Mocha and Kobe. They are absolutely the sweetest little boys I have ever met. I love them to bits and pieces. And they are my babies 100%. Like I said, they're both Morkies, which is a Maltese Yorkie mix. And by the way, I don't have anything on my Q-tip. I was just rubbing away those mascara marks. And then the one right there, try to just gently go in with my spoolie and remove those spots if I can. But they're, like I said, they're half brothers and Kobe is the youngest one and he is so sweet, but he is just a spunk. Oh my gosh. He is just 
nonstop. The kid wears me out, but he is a very sweet boy. If you meet him for the first time, he's not very good at first impressions. He will probably bark at you a lot, but he, once you get to know him and he gets to know you, he is a very sweet boy who loves, loves, loves to play and to give kisses. He is a kissy addict and his absolute favorite play partner is his daddy. I can try to play with them, with both of them, and they just, they're just not as excited to play with me as they are to play with their daddy. I am just not as cool as dad. And plus I'm home all the time, so I think they get bored of me. <laughs> but then there's Mocha, who is an absolute cuddle baby. He will cuddle you literally all day long. He used to be more spunky as a puppy, but he is just a love bug. He, I call him, I call him the golden boy, because he has golden hair and a golden heart. That boy is just a whole bundle of love and handsome. We call Mocha handsome and Kobe cute cute because Kobe is too young to be handsome. So I am going in right now with. My Naked 2 palette again from Urban Decay, and I am going into my very beloved color here, which is Tease, which is basically just kind of a cool brown. I'm just going into the crease, and then just getting the very outer corner. Sorry, my boys are hearing something outside. Had to be Mocha. <laughs> So I'm just basically using this as the transition shade and it's just going to be kind of the base for my eyeshadow today. Hi Kobe. Hello. Did you bring a toy? Did you? Oh, oh my gosh, Scout. So this is Riley. <laughs> Welcome him to my YouTube channel. Please don't sit on my lap right now, Bubba. This is my <laughs> parents' first big guy. He is a golden retriever and uh, very needy, but we love him. <laughs> Bubba, sit down. Not on me. Okay. <laughs> and he weighs 80 pounds. Yeah. Say hello, Bubba. Yes, I see you too, Scout. Scout weighs 100 pounds. So currently, I have Mocha in front of me who weighs 16, 17 pounds. Scout, that weighs 100. Bubba, or Riley, who weighs about 80. And Kobe, over there, that weighs about 11. So there is way more poundage of dog to human in this room. Yeah, all right. So let's just keep going, shall we? So I have my transition shade. And I feel like that is fairly blended out. I'm using my Scott Barnes 6-2 brush, which is literally like a dream. So now I'm gonna go into the color Busted, which is this color right here. Sorry, I'm having to <laughs> do different camera angles now that I have a very large dog next to me. But um, that's the same color I also use for my brows. I am dipping in with my Pure Minerals Utility Brush, and I am just swiping inwards and staying on the outer third of my lid, always tapping off the excess eyeshadow, and just going into that V shape, going angling up towards the outside of your lid, and then going like that to make that V shape into your crease. So tell me what you've been cooking or baking since everything with the quarantine and the coronavirus. Tell me what you've been making and loving. I know my Instant Pot is getting tons and tons and tons of use. Lord knows the poor thing's probably just going to fall apart soon, <laughs> but it's gotten a good run on this outside edge, running into the crease a little bit. And not going up as far as I did with the color tees, but now I'm going to go in, back in with my Scott Barnes brush with tees and just hit the outside edges again to 
to make sure that transition shade is visible. So now I'm going to go in with my smudger brush from e.l.f. into the color T's, tap off the excess, and go along two-thirds of the lower lash line. Okay, then I'm going to go in with Busted and just do the outer third of my lower lash line just a tiny bit. And I always try to make sure and blend the lower lash line colors up with the edge of my eyeshadow on the top lid. It just gives it a little bit more of a seamless look, which is always good with eyeshadow unless you're doing like a cut crease or something like that. Now I'm going to take my ring finger and dip into YDK right here, which is kind of a cool toned bronzy color. If bronze can be a cool tone, then this would be it. And I'm just kind of patting and dragging this color all over my lid except for the parts of my eyelid where I put the busted color um, but kind of tapping and blending that so it's not a harsh line so something that I have been dying to do and have been doing is going shopping and shopping is a guilty pleasure for me I absolutely love to go shopping it's just, I just enjoy it so much. I love looking at all the stuff, especially now since I've discovered more makeup brands and, you know, checking out Ulta and Sephora. So I love to go shopping and that's something my sister and I would always do when we were teens is we would go out together a lot, blast some music as we were going to the mall. So now I'm going to go into Verve, which is this color right here, which is really kind of like a, a silvery color. And I'm going to go with that color right in the center of my lid. But anyway, so my sister and I would go shopping a lot, pretty much every weekend, especially when neither one of us had boyfriends. <laughs> we would go shopping and we would have a lot of fun. We would always go into like American Eagle. We would always go into Hollister and one of our stops was always Victoria's Secret. We loved to go in and smell all the perfumes before I had a major sensitivity to fragrance, uh, which I can't do now, but I love VS. I actually worked there for about four years and I loved it. I loved, loved, loved helping the customers. So I did a few different jobs there actually. So I loved helping the customers. I really liked working with, I really loved working with all of the associates. I loved the social aspect of it. I loved being able to help moms and daughters who would come into the store, just not sure what to do, not sure what to get. The daughter's a little uncomfortable and just make them feel good about themselves. And you know, a girl getting her first bra, you know, who's a little bit uncomfortable with it and just making her feel comfortable like this is totally normal and helping her to feel good about herself and just getting you know a basic nude bra which every woman needs you know it doesn't and just help her to feel good about herself help her feel comfortable about her purchase and I, one of my favorite memories i'm going into blackout now which is this dark but it's basically just a black matte and i'm going with my angle brush and i'm just hitting the outer two-thirds of my lash line but anyway, one of my favorite memories from working there was when I was helping a customer. And she was probably, mm, probably like 17-ish. And she had her younger sister there with her, who was probably closer to 14, 15, I would say. And the older sister was in getting a bra fitting with me um, because I was, at one point I was a seller at BS and I was also a bra fitting specialist. And so I was getting, I was doing her bra fitting and she found some bras that she loved and her sister was in there with her while she got her fitting. 
her sister had loved what I had picked out for her and she really felt good about her size. She was about the size that I had given her and that she felt so com so much more comfortable in that size now that it was actually the right fit. And the sister, the younger sister, was really pretty timid about it. The older sister was trying to convince her the whole time, you know, you should really get a fitting, you should really get a fitting. It, the bras are so much more comfortable, they actually fit you well, and you know, you look better and you feel better and the whole nine yards. But I was trying not to push her, but I really wanted to give her a fitting too, um, just because I wanted her to feel good about herself and I wanted her to be comfortable. But and so I didn't, I didn't push her into it because I didn't want her to to be uncomfortable. But by the end of the older sister's fitting, the younger sister says, "Okay, I want you to do my fitting." And so I was like, "Yes!" I was so excited. I wanted to do her fitting in the worst way, and so I was so glad that she felt comfortable with me, and that I was able to give her a fitting. And what was funny is the younger sister was in the room with the older sister while I was giving the older sister the fitting. I'm just going in with my um, my pressed powder and just touching up underneath my eyes. Um, and so they were in there together. And so the younger sister decided she wanted a fitting too. And she so she kicks the older sister out of the fitting room. She's like, I don't want you in here. And so she kicks the older sister out and she's like, all right, fine, whatever. And so I'm helping the younger sister and got her perfect fit and was finding her some bras to go with her new size. And she, um, she had tried some bras on and she, I was standing next to the older sister while the younger sister was trying her bras on. And I was kind of telling her how the process was going and that she was doing well, that the sister was being a champ and being a trooper and going through it. And because it can be, it can be an uncomfortable process for some ladies. Some ladies just don't give a, a rip, but, and she opens the fitting room door just enough to pop her head out. And she, she goes, come here to the older sister. And so the older sister starts walking towards her and she goes, no, not you. I want her and points to me. And that just made me feel so good because she felt comfortable with me coming into the fitting room with her and even more comfortable than she wanted than her older sister, than having her older sister in the fitting room with her, um, which I just, I thought that was so cool. Um, and I just, I loved that experience with that job. But, um, and of course, I love more than anything to spend time with my husband and my puppies. And so that was always hard for me but so I didn't love the whole actual working part of it, you know, punching a clock, but everything else was really good. Um, so I just took Pink Crush from the Scott Barnes palette and I just popped it into my inner corner and probably the first third of my lower lash line. So now I'm just going to take one of my eyeshadow brush from Pure Minerals, which is just a flat brush, and I'm gonna take Pink Crush and Twilight Sand, mix that together, and just hop this on the brow bone. But anyway, I loved that job. I loved a lot about that job. I loved helping helping people and just making them feel great about themselves. I'm just going to top off this look with a little bit more mascara. I put some on my lower lashes earlier. They probably saw me doing, but I forgot to talk about it. <laughs> So now I'm just going in with some more mascara on my top lashes. So this pretty much finishes up the video. So please leave in the comments below any topics that you would like to talk about for the next get ready with me little chit chat moment that we're having here today. I hope that you all enjoyed this video and that you all were maybe able to learn some tips and tricks that you hadn't thought of or tried. But anyway, I think that that is it. So here is my finished look. Again, leave any of your replies, comments, answers to my questions in the comment section down below. Tell me what you'd like to chat about for the next time we do a Get Ready With Me. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, share it, and um, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and stay safe.